Alright, so I have no idea how to start that video, but all I know, I've got to be in the post office in the next 10 minutes or this will be delayed even later. Um, so I'm pretty happy to have you guys all around. Um, stick with me for all the dirty little details on what's inside this box, where this is going, what it is for and especially how I made it. So. I hope you enjoy your stay over here and let's get started. Alright, what we're gonna do is we take this part over to the mill and make it really unique and good looking. Uh, we're going to do that on the small Mayho because with a reasonable size tool I can reach the table easily, but... Uh, okay. Uh, well, I forgot about that. Alright, so the uh, whole pattern was intentionally, um, so I could bolt this directly to the table. First thing we're going to do is to get out the trusty Wohlhaupter and uh, face this part with a, a really sharp aluminum insert. This is feeling so crisp and sublime compared to this one. Um, I guess it's safe to say this has made quite a transformation yet. So I'm gonna do the other one and we'll meet back. So, but why was this part being 3D printed in the first place? I mean, there are just some freaking counterboard holes and some engraving in there. I could have done that out of a, like, raw material, no problem. But in this case I wouldn't have been able to show you the machine I've made this on. This is a completely self-built or at least uh, reconfigured CMM. Weighs uh, around 1.3 tons and a total of 18 air bearings. Yeah, help to maneuver these on three axes. So actually there is a seven part series on this YouTube channel where I do the conversion of the machine. So if you find any interest in that, check this out. Alright, so I already went ahead and did some programming on this one. This brass rod will become eight of those standoffs. We're going to be needing to like hold the front plate to a certain distance to the base plate. And since I need eight of those, we're going to do that on the CNC lathe and uh, this should be really quick uh, compared to doing that on the manual lathe. So. So a little bit of trivia to German CNC machines. While like the British Colchesters are like advanced in time traveling applications, this one has a secret code in its controller. So let me let me show you. If you hit the cycle G69 and like hit cycle start, it will actually tell you a joke. Sagt die Frau zum Mann, ich lasse mich scheiden, du bist mir viel zu kindisch. Sagt der Mann, ha 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 ha, du hast Scheide gesagt.
So welcome back to the desk. I finished these pieces on the CNC lathe. Also I took the chance to finish off these four parts. Uh, these will be soldered to the next part we're making and we're finally coming really close to the central part of whatever we're building here. And these pieces are going to be machined out of this raw stock which is also a brass and this happens to be a 10 by 100 mil. So what we're going to do is we're going to chop off two larger chunks of this uh, material and take it over to the mill. This time we're going to do that on the bigger maho. And, uh, So to cut this into parts, I want to try an old technique I saw in a dude's video. So this is looking good. One last check. Awesome. Alright, so I got the first part uh, in the vise and pit picked up all the work coordinates. Um, so what we're going to do is mill two pockets in here where we can later solder on the uh, like connection points. So I already went ahead and put in a f uh, blank of soft jaws. They are spaced by these uh, parallels and I already faced the tops. And what we're gonna do is mill two pockets in here that will later on accept the bosses from where we soldered it to.
So I've gone through a little bit of trouble with getting the right finish on, uh, on the buttons itself. And I thought while I have the first one finished, I'm going to take you through the whole process while doing the second. Um, in terms of how did surface finish end up? Well, you can be the judge by yourself. I started off by bead blasting the part. It gives the brass a very uniform texture and the matte finish sets a nice contrast to the shining front. I then gave it a really quick and rough lap on some 1K grit sandpaper to achieve a flat surface and remove all of the marks from machining. That being done, I filled all the engraved channels and details with some black high strength nail polish and cured it under the UV lamp. Once settled I could use a fresh blade to get rid of all the excess and prevent the sanding paper from clocking up in the later steps. I again used sheets of sandpaper taped to the surface plate to create a nearly perfect front. I started with 1k and worked my way up to 5k grid size. I want to use this moment to draw a line between lapping and polishing. In the end both may seem really reflective, but in this case you can see the created surface is also absolutely in plane. I mean, I have no idea why that would matter for a kid's present, but hey, you gotta nerd out as often as possible. When I was happy with the result, I used a linen cloth and some lapping compounds to bring the lapped surface to an absolute shine. I did this in two steps with different grid sizes. After the, the last one you can use it straight up as a mirror. Off camera I also finished a few other pieces to the puzzle like the small thumb screws and the front plates. So I guess we can finally assemble everything. Have fun. <laughs>